Oh, yeah, I didn't finish talking about it. <laughs> okay, so we're in a dying world. We have to come out of denial that we're in a dying world. But uh, once we come out of denial and we go through those phases and we don't stop at acceptance, yeah, the world is dying, you know, uh, eat, drink, and be merry, or let's pray and, you know, try to get over our sins and whatever. No, what if we do a paradigm shift and we realize, no, the world is not actually dying. The world is in a process of rebirth. And why don't we be part of what's being born, not part of what's dying? And uh, by uh, accepting that the power that gave birth to the world in the first place is still here, we can harness that power because that power will allow that to be able to have continuity and yet modification. See, that's the, the difference. What is a transformation? It, it is, a transformation means you continue, but you're different. So uh, the caterpillar does not uh, continue except as a butterfly. It's different, right? There's a transformation. But we would also have to say, no, the butterfly is the caterpillar, right? So. It is and it is not. And, and so our world is going through that kind of a paradoxical modification in which Kali Yuga dies, but Sat Yuga is born. And how that happens can only be known at the moment you enter the singularity and have the intelligence that understands this whole process. Okay, which is not a, a scientific process. It's a miraculous process. It's way beyond anything science could imagine. So once that has been uh, understood, one can go through that even in advance and begin to bring in those forces of the real that are able to um, support the, um, the transitional process so that there isn't a collapse uh, in a premature way and one is able to move in such a way that the, 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 the rebuilding of the new is able to happen without the, the extinction of the old until the metamorphosis has been complete and suffering is minimized. And in fact, it's eliminated completely. So this is the most benevolent possible process. But it doesn't look that way to the ego. But if you awaken to the truth of what's happening, that will create a paradigm shift in which you will realize that all of this is a blessing, including the, the worst cataclysms seemingly that we are going to face. Because it's a dream and no one really dies and none of this really causes harm, only at the apparent level. Once we have realized that for ourselves, we can understand that with others and have compassion that is also dispassion because they're safe. You don't need to be a rescuer. But what you do have to do is rescue yourself from the illusion. And once you have done that, then the, uh, the world is no longer a dying world. The, the world is a world in constant evolution that is now going to reach a higher level of self-realization. And nothing is lost but a, a tremendous new unfoldment at a higher level of consciousness will ensue. So it's, it's that uh, paradigm shift that we require in order to be able to take advantage of what's going on rather than be uh, destroyed by it. And to use it, to use this knowledge as a win-win uh, for everyone. There don't have to be losers in this. Although some, especially the current elites, will think they are losing power and some new world order will emerge. It's not actually like that. But only when you understand the nature of the benevolence of the uh, creator Will, will that be clear as to the destiny of all the beings who are participating in uh, act five of this play, 
that is going to lead to the deus ex machina that will bring uh, glory to all and not uh, defamation or defeat or some condemnation to hell, but in fact, liberation. <laughs>